Hey, I'm Fishboy and I will be covering the more advanced techniques, guidance, and troubleshooting that you may come across and that I've seen quite a bit. This will not include any bare bones or basic how-tos as Remy Tufang already has two great guides on this. Alright, so to begin, I want to quickly state that one of the most important things is that you want to understand that the more bones that you have, the more flowy and intricate your physics will be. If you want a really good example, my Jyotu Ryu has very intricate coat uh, physics because there are so many. Now, this isn't necessary for everything, it all depends on what you want, but if you want something to be super intricate, super nice, and be very flowy, more bones is always good to have. Uh, one of the most common things that I've seen is that when people do their own bones, they tend to forget one major thing that really can mess up how physics look and just straight up not make it work. So when you're making bones, that they will have a decimal, especially if you're duplicating them. Uh, a way to just easily fix this is just get rid of the decimal and organize it however you want to organize it. The way that I do it is having it by, let's say, C test, and then one, underscore one. So this is the first bone of the hierarchy. And then any of the duplicated ones, I would have that. And now test one, underscore two, because now it is part of the second of the hierarchy. And then for every corresponding side, this will still be under the test family, but now it's under the hierarchy of two. So you want to try to follow uh, this kind of organization so that you could know what belongs where and just straight up have an easier time when creating the weights, finding bones that you want to fix, and creating the chain groups. One of the easiest ways to get super quick and cheap uh, physics working is that once you have to after you make the bones and after you do the weights you want to create the chain group and then plop it into anything under the wind settings and chain settings you don't have to create your own just plop it into a random one so that you could see in game if it's functional and then from there you can create your own uh, designated wind settings or chain settings and then work from there now one of the things that you're going to have to get used to when doing physics especially with collisions is that RE Framework Chain Viewer is going to be a humongous asset. So this lets you pretty much change the collision size and location on the fly in game so you can know what you want to do. So let's say this was like way over here and I just needed to like fix this and I want to see how good it will actually be. So let's have it be here and then like this and then increasing the size. Obviously increasing the size will make the collision box really wonky, so you want to be very conservative with it. Now, after you pretty much see what the radius and the offset and then the pair offset, uh, you want to open up 010 editor. Once you inserted your chain file into 010 editor with the template of RE chain, you want to go to your collisions. Then click the tab again. You're going to see all of your different collisions. For the case of the hair that I showcased earlier, I only have three collisions, so we're working with a lot less. Depending on how many collisions you do, you will have either way more or maybe even one. <laughs> so one of the main things that you want to see is the float radius. Uh, that is, of course, the radius uh, in-game, and you want to copy that value of whatever you had in-game that you tested into this right here. Now the position uh, is the position and then the pair uh, position is the second part of it. So you want to pretty much do XYZ which is the same order as uh, the RE Framework Chain Viewer. So using this you can get very precise changes to your collisions for better physics. Now, for physics that are clipping through each other, as now uh, showcased on screen, this is one that I helped with a while ago, and it's a pretty simple fix, 
I don't know if there's a better one out there. If so, please let me know. But this is what I did to solve this issue. So uh, the issue was that the accessory right here was also clipping through the dress, even though they are both physics. So a way that I pretty much fix this is that I went to the accessory and over here you can see collision radius. So let's turn this on real quick. So you can see collision radius and you pretty much want to make it bigger than the colli uh, collision radius of whatever it's clipping with. So, so something like the dress, it's over here. We definitely want to make that bigger. So you can go from like 0 0.5 to now 0 0.7 and just keep doing that for every single one so that if there's any clipping it will be a lot harder to see and it's a lot uh, less likely to happen since this one has the bigger radius. Now let's cover more specific things you can do with physics. Now we're going to get back into the more advanced techniques or things that are more uh, situational or that you may particularly want. So for this part, we're going to be making things stand either upright or have a certain angle to them. There's a couple of ways to do this. Of course, you can do angle limit radius, but what if you want the entire mesh itself to be in a certain way of physics? So there's a reason why my Jotaro Ryu has his coat sticking out like this. That's because I'm using Spring Force, and Spring Force returns any uh, mesh to its original position in the rest pose. So because of this uh, coat, pretty much having a 90 degree angle, the coat will m always be like this in game and flow with the physics right physics that I have and one of this is the Miracle Chun-Li. So create the bones and remember how I said earlier the more bones you have the more flowy it will uh, be. Then I have uh, quite a bit here because bunny ears are quite floppy. They have uh, <laughs> not too much weight to it. So uh, I did that as I would regularly. And there's going to be two important distinctions to make between the gravity way and the spring force way. The spring force way requires that the mesh itself is positioned in the way that you want it to be uh, through physics. Well, gravity will be very much different and I'll show why. Now that we are in game, I can showcase the differences. So first, let's have sad bunny, Miriko chun -Li. Uh I don't want her to be a sad bunny, I want her to be a happy bunny. So using Lua Free Cam, I go down to Street Fighter 6 Tools, Player 1, because chun -Li isn't a Player 1 category, and it already fixed itself, but for the sake of this, let's disable this. Let's mess it up. Let's make her a sad bunny. <laughs> uh, so the gravity will obviously change it. So higher gravity will be stronger. So if we have something ridiculous like, let's say, positive 30, even with no spring force, it still stays up. Now higher gravity will of course have a stronger effect. So having pure gravity is great if you still want to have like very uh, varied positions, rotations, and without having to go into angle limit. Uh, of course, you can also use spring force on top of it so that you can control like its speed and how much it actually moves. But there's other things that can help there, which is reduced distance and hardness. Reduced distance is pretty much telling how much uh, distance each node, each bone in the physics hierarchy uh, pretty much interacts with each other. So if I have none, they're way more likely to clip into each other. But with a little bit, or like let's say half, 
no, it's less likely to clip into each other and actually feels like there's something there. There's actually mass. I think that's the best way to put it, that there's actually mass there. So if you put something ridiculous like this, it still has physics, uh, physics yes, but um, it's significantly more dense. So try to find and toy around with the settings so that you can find something you like. Hardness is very self-explanatory, just how hard it is, and elastic is uh, pretty much is stretchy stuff. Most likely going to see it when you're jumping. Um, I recommend it uh, turning it off unless if you want something to be like really stretchy or you want like a cool effect. Totally up to you. All, all depends on what you want. Now for the spring force uh, method. So the main difference between spring force and the gravity is that spring force, once again, needs the mesh to be in its uh, intended position. Because in Blender, you saw how it was standing upright, almost at a 90 degree angle. Uh, and in here, it is flowing down. It fixed itself. Well, let's turn that off. And this is pretty much the physics taking over. If I activate even a little sliver of spring force, it starts to go back to its uh, intended original position. And now it is flowing and it is looking good. Now, another technique that I do for especially hair is to separate the mesh itself. So first you want to, of course, select the mesh, go into edit mode and go into wireframe. Select a good chunk of it, like a side of it, then hit Control L. Uh, then let's see if we missed any spots. Nope. So now it's completely separate from the sister mes uh, meshes. Let's go to separate. Separate by selection. And now we have pretty much two more sides. Once again in wireframe, select a chunk of it. Control L to select a link. Mesh, separate, selection. Now we have three different uh, groups for the meshes. So because I already added the weights to it, let's see how it would look. It moves completely on its own without affecting any of the sister ones. So the way that I went about this, uh, so I separated it, and then from there, I go into the white paints, and I created all of these bones and you can just start from here. So I did it through the edit method. So I go into the wireframe and I do this, assign, and then the next part over here, L, L hair two, assign, and then the next one, L hair underscore three, and you just keep going from there and there and there. And once you are done with the wind painting, and you smooth it and you limit total, uh, limit total by six, you want to essentially combine them all to the base of sub mesh. And then now you have completely, completely good, totally separate hair mesh that will look really good in game. And once you do create the chain files and you put it back into the game, once again, Make sure you export with new SS and have the command dash bones. The last thing I want to discuss is to pretty much help out to make things like coats pretty much actually work as intended. So um, if you have like a coat or a dress or anything of the sort where it's like there's going to be a lot of collisions or anything like that, it doesn't matter how many bones you have. I have a ton of bones. This will still not interact with collisions properly. Then uh, how do you fix that? Well, it's pretty simple. So we're going to do our chain. Let's just create it. Uh, let's create so this one and this one just for the sake of this tutorial. And let's go back to the RE chain tab, make sure you're in objects mode, and create chain link. So over here in chain link, you're going to go scroll down and you're going to see chain group A, chain group B. Now the chain group 44 is the skirt 1, 
And then chain group 45 is chain group uh, with the second skirt. So we go back to the chain link and let's do 44. And we have quite a bit, so let's limit that a little bit more. Actually, let's put C skirt. Where are you? Ah, here we go. So chain group 44, skirt, and that's the one that we have. That's the chain group. And we're going to put pretty much the added jessant uh, chain over here. So it would be chain group. 45 and now that's basically it um this is what i did when doing the chain links uh pretty much any added adjacent chain links that you want uh to like be together you want to use the chain link it pretty much tells the chain file that oh hey you will fall along and collide with so and so because of that, I will now test it. Um, one general question that I had when doing this is, okay, so since this one is connected, linked with the first one, do I have to do the, like this one to, let's say this one, and then make another chain link where this one's connected to this? Yes. I think the more chain links that you have for something uh, like a dress or a coat, I think they will produce better results and have better interactions with physics and collisions. So in this example, we have the chain links on the mud, on the physics, and it is behaving pretty normal. It's colliding with the legs appropriately, and it even slides off her leg. And then you can take a look on the jury on the right, and it is folds up on her right leg. So having chain links is very important for things like dresses, coats, and anything of the sort that could be ignoring collisions. When in doubt, chain link it out. All right, well, that's all the information that I have for now. The detailed written guide is in the description alongside Remy Two Fangs and the additional guides in Modder's Place. I hope I was able to help you guys out and I'll see you guys around. See ya!